Tommy Defoe, Schmad, Barry Beautiful, each week here on SixShot.com. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to preface it by saying, a lot of you need to watch the show twice this week to really comprehend what I'm going to say to you, because you're going to, it's going to sound reckless, but it's because I'm twice as bright as you, like I'm twice as intelligent, so if you watch the show twice this week, you understand the things I'm saying. Most some people get it the first time. We we hear. We hear. There's other people, the majority of y'all keep sending me all these emails about how crazy I am. You just don't get it. So if you need to watch the show twice because you will then understand that we are twice as smart as you. If you don't understand what we're saying here. Each week. If you don't understand it, watch me twice. Then you'll get it all together. Just preface that right now. Don't get mad. No hate mail. Going to start this week off by talking about my favorite, favorite mayor. Start with some politics. Mayor of Detroit, Tommy Kilpatrick. He is getting 100% of my support. People are coming out of his throat, and I just can't understand why. Yes, he is the mayor of Detroit. And maybe he presided over somehow $9 million being lost from the Detroit budget. You know, things happen. Okay, don't blame just the mayor when $9 million goes missing. Who knows what happened to that money? Maybe he did cheat on his wife. And maybe he did lie about it under oath. These things could have happened. So be it. But let me ask you all this. Do you know what it's like to be the mayor of a humongous city like Detroit? Do you understand the pressures and responsibilities that must put on Mayor Kilpatrick? Huh? You don't get it? I don't even understand. So you should back off for help. There's a lot of pressure. Well, imagine if you sitting there. You know Detroit ain't got a lot of money. You trying to make all of them one, two, three, or four dollars stretch as far as they can. You sitting there in the meat hall and the city hall trying to figure out what you gonna do to get the school some money. The kids need books. The phones gotta be fixed. You need to give cops more money. And you are stressed out. And you don't know what to do with yourself. That's got to be tough. And I can understand being in that position and saying to your somewhat sexy chief of staff, hey lady, why don't you get naked so we can relieve some of this stress. I would do it, and so would you. And why are you holding it against him? Yeah, he could have gone home and seen his wife about that, but they had more work to do, okay? I need to relieve stress and then go right back to fixing the fiscal budget for 2008. Maybe a little fellatio helps me focus more, okay? So what? She's the chief of staff. I mean, she, um, she can relate. She's stressed out too. This works for both of us. So why hold it against them? Maybe he shouldn't have lied. But I can understand why he lied and why he did it. He wasn't supposed to tell everybody, you know, unless they find out the truth. Now you send the text messages and they, people say that I was stupid, Kwame. You can't send freaking text messages like that. Well, guess what? Freaking text messages are a good way to start off any day. I have been getting, for the last six months, I have been getting one freaking text message from some woman I know to start me off with a smile on my face, okay? If you've never gotten a freaking text message in the morning, you wouldn't understand how that could illuminate the rest of your day. This last week I was having a bad, it was Thursday, I was having a rough day. I woke up out, it wasn't in a good mood, my stomach was gurgling a little bit, my ankle was swollen, but I was running to the gym, and I looked at my phone, and it was jubilant on my phone, with a good morning freaking text message. And that made my day. Okay, so maybe they was making each other's day with the freaking text messages. Because it's stressful being mayor of Detroit. Let Pommy, we good. We good. Fight the power. Go home now. And stop running the streets. Because you're not in a position to run no more. But I can understand why you did what you did. And speaking on some political stuff, shout out to my main man, John McCain. Took down Florida. Took down South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, right? And he's going to win the Republican nomination, and that means Mitt Romney's out of there, so we can beat John McCain next round. Sure. People, John McCain, that's who we getting for. That's who we behind. A lot of people are getting on Amy Whitehouse now, and again, I am getting behind Amy. Yeah, there's a video with her out smoking crack. And we all know crack is whack, and cocaine brings you pain. But hold on for a second. Maybe, just maybe, the fans of Amy Winehouse should wonder if it's really the crack or the cocaine that makes Amy so talented. Maybe her being high is what brings out the part of Amy we all know and love. Now, 
I don't really know Amy. And I'm sure she wasn't always on crack. She was probably on other drugs. Now, if we try to get her off crack, that means we gotta get her off everything. And if she's all of everything, maybe the songs won't sound the same. Maybe we should slow down and ask her what she really wants. I don't want to see her live. I tried to see her live. She canceled it because she was too high. And I can understand that. You on crack. Your, your time schedule, it just doesn't make sense. I understand that. But can you make albums? Do you make albums better high? If you make albums better high, maybe all the one house fans should just ease up off her and allow her to make a few more albums before she passes out and just do what she has to do. Amy, if you need Crack to make his song, I support it. Crack's one of them drugs where it's no helping you anyway because you're too old to be on Crack. But if you need Crack to make it, so be it. Same thing for Lil Wayne to a certain extent. Listen, he's not on Crack. He's on pills or whatever the hell he got caught with this week. Every time they catch Lil Wayne, he is caught with a medicine cabinet full of pills. And people say, well, why are you taking so many pills? Wait a minute. Maybe he's the greatest in the game because he's the highest in the game. I, I don't know what his, you know, thought process goes through. What maybe he needs amount, you know, luscious amounts of weed to brainstorm. Or pop a pill to do a hook. I don't know what, what helps him get creative. That stuff wouldn't help me, but if it helps you, who are we to judge? I do what you gotta do. Make the hits. Now that I'm understanding that you're on drugs, I, I won't expect certain that I won't expect you to show up on time to a concert or at all to a concert. I expect you to be in jail to mess up some shows. I'm not trying to get none of your show money. I just want you to keep driving out. And if Amy and Lil Wayne need to be high to get it done, they got my support. If you feel like I'm wrong, watch it twice and you'll understand. But I'm pretty much correct. And the last clip for this week, happens to be about a Pittsburgh wide receiver, Cedric Wilson. The reason I'm bringing this up because Cedric tried to break with his girlfriend last week and his girlfriend spazzed out. She went crazy. He had to get an order of protection against her because when he tried to break up with her, she bugged out. Started got a pistol, started firing off in the house. When the police guy came, she had like a 12 hour standoff because she just couldn't take the pressure of not being with Cedric for whatever reason. I don't know why she's crazy, but I will blame Cedric for not preparing himself to break up with this lady. I know a lot of you fellas and ladies out there are considering breaking up with whoever you with because in April, it will start to get warm again. And what's the point of being with them when it's warm outside? It's time to have fun. I feel the same way. I'm probably gonna do the same thing. But I would like to say this. If you're planning on doing this, you must prepare properly. P P. P P. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. You gotta prepare for these types of things. How do you prepare for it? Here's the things you do. First thing you do, you grab up all the stuff that's yours out of their house and take all that stuff and get it to their house. And you don't say I'm just moving stuff, saying you're reorganizing your life. You're finding new things to do. You want to get centralized and focused for 2000. Ain't nobody that crap. They will. They will. All you want to do, you want to start moving your car to different places. You want to find seven or eight different places to park your car because your car is the first thing they're going to go after if they're crazy and they want to break up with you. So move your car to different places. When you're home or when you're at your job. Maybe get new tags, all that type of stuff. Prepare yourself for what's about to go down with this crazy person. You want to get rid of all your pertinent information that they know. You want to change all your passwords. You want to change all that stuff. They're on their computer and everything. You want to change your life. Get rid of all of that stuff. And then finally, when you're already prepared to break up with this person, you pick up your cell phone and do it over the phone. There's no need for you to do it face to face. You're just causing problems. Let them wild out when you ain't there. Okay, if she wanna buck a buck a buck she can buck a buck a buck when she's by herself. If my man wanna buck a buck a buck by yourself, over the phone. They may call you a punk. They may call you a coward. But who cares? You don't want to be with them no more anyway.